Hi guys! Um, I want to start our new chapter book since we finished the Polaris. I want to start with you the BFG by Roald Dahl. Okay, The Witching Hour, Chapter 1. Sophie couldn't sleep. A brilliant moonbeam was slanting through a gap in the curtains. It was shining right on her pillow. The other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours. Sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still. She tried very hard to doze off. It was no good. The moonbeam was like a silver blade slicing through the room onto her face. The house was absolutely silent. No voices came up from downstairs. There were no footsteps on the floor above either. The window behind the curtain was wide open, but nobody was walking on the pavement outside. No cars went by on the street. Not the tiniest sound could be heard anywhere. Sophie had never known such a silence. Perhaps, she told herself, this was the, what they called the witching hour. The witching hour, somebody had once whispered to her, was a special moment in the middle of the night when every child and every grown-up was in a deep, deep sleep. And all the dark things that came out from hiding had the world to themselves. The moonbeam was brighter than ever on Sophie's pillow. She decided to get out of bed and close the gap in the curtains. You got, puni you got punished if you were caught out of bed after lights out, even if you said you had to go to the lavatory. That was not accepted as an excuse, and they punished you just the same. But there was no one about now. Sophie was sure of that. She reached out for her glasses that lay on the chair beside her bed. They had steel rims and thick, very thick lenses. And she could hardly see a thing without them. She put them on. Then she slipped out of bed and tiptoed over to the window. When she reached the curtains, Sophie hesitated. She longed to duck underneath them and lean out the window to see what the world looked like. Now that the witching hour was at hand. She listened again. Everywhere it was deathly still. The, lo the longing to look out became so strong she couldn't resist it. Quickly she ducked under the curtains and leaned out of the window. In the silvery moonlight the village street she knew so well seemed completely different. The houses looked bent and crooked and the little houses it, like little houses in a fairy tale. Everything was pale and ghostly and milky white. Across the road, she could see Mrs. Rance's shop, where you bought buttons and wool for, and bits of elastic. It didn't look real. There was something dim and misty about that, too. Sophie allowed her eyes to travel farther and farther down the street. Suddenly, she froze. There was something coming up the street on the opposite side. It was something black, something tall and black, something very tall and black and very thin. Who? Chapter two. It wasn't a human. It couldn't be. It was four times as tall as the tallest human. It was so tall, its head was higher than the upstairs windows of the houses. Sophie opened her mouth to scream, but no sound came out. Her throat, like her whole body, was frozen with fright. This was the witching hour, all right. The tall black figure was coming her way. It was keeping very close to the houses across the street, hiding in the shadowy places where there was no, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, no moonlight. On and on it came, nearer and nearer. But it was moving in spurts. It would stop, then it would move on. Then it would stop again. But what on earth was it doing? Aha! Sophie could see now what it was up to. It was stopping in front of each house. It would stop and peer into the upstairs window of each house in the street. It actually had to bend down to peer into the upstairs windows. That's how tall it was. It would stop and peer in. And then it would slide to the next house and stop again and peer in and so on all along the street. It was much closer now and Sophie could see it more clearly. Looking at it carefully, she sighed. It had to be some kind of person? Obviously, it was not a human, but it was definitely a person. A giant person, perhaps. Sophia, Sophie stared hard across the misty moonlight street. The giant, if that was what he was, 
was wearing a long black cloak. In one hand, he was holding what looked like a very long, thin trumpet. Um, sorry, I lost my spot. There we go. In the, uh, in the other hand, he held a large suitcase. The giant st stopped right in front of Mr. and Mrs. Grocery's house. The Gucci's had a green grocer shop in the middle of the high street, and the family lived above the shop. The two grocery children slept in the upstairs front room. Sophie knew that. Sorry, guys, my cat just jumped up on the table and then fell off. And it made that big sound. Um, the giant was peering through the window into the room where Michael and Jane Gucci were sleeping from across the street. Sophie watched and held her breath. She saw the giant step back and place and put the suitcase down on the pavement. He bent over and opened the suitcase. He took something out of it. It looked like a glass jar. One of those square jars, ones with a screw top. He unscrewed the top of the jar and poured what looked what was in it into the end of the long trumpet thing. Sophie watched, trembling. She saw the giant straight giant straighten up again, and she saw him poke the trumpet in through the upstairs window of one of the room where the Gucci children were sleeping. She saw the giant take a deep breath and whoosh, he blew through the trumpet. Oh, and there's a picture. No noise came out, but it was obvious to Sophie that whatever had been in the jar had now been blown through the trumpet into the Gucci children's bedroom. What could it be? As a giant withdrew the trumpet from the window and bent down to pick up the suitcase, he happened to turn his head and glance across the street. In the moonlight, Sophie caught a glimpse of an enormous long pale wrinkly face with the most enormous ears. The nose was as sharp as a knife, and above the nose were the two bright flashing eyes. And the eyes were st staring straight at Sophie. There was a fierce and devilish look about them. Sophie gave a yelp and pulled back from the window. She flew across the dormitory and jumped into her bed and hid under the blanket. And there she crouched, still as a mouse, tingling all over. All right, we'll find out what happens in chapter three tomorrow. There we go. Bye, guys.